I have been studying a very important subject, and that is Bible interpretation. But uh, my ultimate aim was to lead you to personal Bible studies. How to study the Word of God personally? But we cannot study the Word of God personally if we don't know how to interpret the Bible. And we have had a lot of background. There are a few more subjects which I am uh, keeping away till I give something practical, and then we will come back to it. For example, uh, what are the errors of interpretation? Many people say. oh i am very much afraid lest i make a mistake we will cover that in errors of interpretation and lord willing that will come later today i want to give or start with a practical demonstration of bible interpretation but uh before i go further i have an announcement to make most of the audience in our monday malayalam class and tuesday english class are common there are only a few people who are who come exclusively to english so there is a proposal to merge our malayalam and english classes together and offer only one class per week every monday which would be offered in malayalam and also english those who those of you who were here yesterday uh, many of you gave feedback that the mixture of malayalam and english which i offered i would give a summary in malayalam then a summary in english many of you suggested that that was enjoyable and also that if both of the classes are merged into one it would be convenient to you particularly now because uh, more and more assemblies are having their regular weekly classes my church has started thursdays and lord willing from june i will be involved in teaching there so this way many of the students have suggested that now they don't have many days free and therefore many asked if we can merge monday and tuesday and there is a proposal and dr sanish and i we have been discussing that proposal even today it looks very promising to us but we will give several weeks before that happens but please consider this as the first notice that monday and tuesday classes might be merged and that the monday class might become an english kam malayalam class today i would i want to pick up the subject uh, how to study and enjoy the bible lot of people tell me i want to study the bible but uh, though i read it with so much attention i am simply unable to enjoy it okay is it possible uh, but before that another question many people say i want to study the bible but i have so many fears i have never studied in a bible school i don't have a massive library so brother johnson is it possible for me to study the bible so these are two questions number one can a believer study the bible himself and my answer is yes yes please go to sam 119 the longest book in the bible and you will find that a young man has written that sam there are plenty of hints inside that sam which shows that it was written by a young man and the young man makes it very clear that the more he studies the more it becomes pleasant to him which indicates that yes individual believers can study the bible the second question is okay i can study 
would i be able to enjoy it why not why not if you are ready to study it you are also preparing to enjoy it many of us have consumed food which was totally new to us and the first time probably you did not enjoy let me tell you about cheese the first time i had cheese in 1970s i hated it it was so horrible the taste was so horrible but eventually i started enjoying that taste and today from time to time we do have cheese in our uh, cheese and bread for breakfast so whether you enjoy it or not depends upon whether you are ready to enjoy it or not if you are ready to enjoy it then even if the initial experience is not a big success you will still be able to enjoy it so can i study the bible yes can i enjoy it yes then comes a third question brother i have never been to a bible school brothers and sisters it is a very big myth illusion that you need to go to a bible school to study the bible others may say brother i don't have a big library no library is needed to understand the word of god in fact 95% of the word of god can be understood without a library oh you may say what about the 5% come on many of you are non vegetarians and when you consume meat 5% is bone what do you do keep it away what do the more mature people do some of them they take a bite from even the bones you may be a fish eater what do you do with the fish bone you keep it away does it prevent you from enjoying your fish or your meat that 5% no doesn't prevent so when it comes to bible studies the 5% that you or i are not able to understand that can safely kept away and the remaining 95% can be enjoyed and as we enjoy the remaining 95% gradually we will discover that we are able to enjoy more and more of that 5% which we had kept away you may ask okay brother uh, what to do this i have repeatedly said anyone who is serious about personal bible study should have one or more bibles i have repeatedly emphasized that it is good to have two three bible translations english has hundreds of translations or at least scores but now indian languages also have multiple translations hindi has multiple translations malayalam has multiple translations even the urdu which is no longer very popular in india even urdu has at least two translations other languages many translations you may ask why i i'll come to that in a moment so you need to have two or three bibles one minimum one solid notebook if it is loose leaf spiral binding excellent if it is a diary that is your choice and a few pens blue or black for writing and if you have more non smearing pens so that you can mark on your bible but if non smearing pens are not available then try crayons 
not the ordinary crayons which are used by school children no they will spoil spoil your bible there is something known as plastic crayon it's easily available get into any any large um stationery shop and you will get plastic crayons far more easy one of the uh, readers has one of the listeners has pointed out good quality color pencils are available camlin among color pencils camlin is the king so buy camlin you may ask brother what is the use i will i will i'm coming to that uh, it would be useful to mark your bible using different colors so all what you need is two or three bible translations one or more notebooks pen and if possible some color pencils or plastic crayons okay why multiple bible translations will help you to understand meaning better please remember greek is a very rich language you cannot translate greek using single sentences in english or hindi or any language so if you consult multiple bible translations the meaning of the original greek would be clearer i uh in my last class i had mentioned amplified bible i had forgotten the name when you read amplified bible then the same greek word which can be translated into many words in english within a bracket amplified bible gives all those words then there are translations which are literal word to word new american standard king james version new king james version they are literal then they are totally uh non literal where the words are expressed in terms of translators words that is living bible but then there are many other translations which have some speciality there is at least one translation which gives a lot of emphasis to greek tenses so a few bible translations would be helpful at least one notebook but as you study you will realize that uh, more than one notebook will be helpful pen the moment an inspiration or an illumination from the holy spirit comes to you note it down oh you may say brother i will note it down after the study is over brothers and sisters many of us when we are talking with others if there is an interruption we forget the subject that being so when an illumination comes to you from the holy spirit if you don't write it down i guarantee you that you will forget it studies of human memory have shown that you forget 90% of what comes to your mind within one hour i am talking about inspiration or illumination which comes to your mind so keep a pen ready at the moment uh, an inspiration hits your mind note it down immediately note it down don't keep it for future third thing or the next thing for a study to be successful you must be consistent consistent means set apart approximately the same time every day for your studies if evening is better for you set apart time in evening if morning is better set apart time in morning i know many people who get up early in the morning before anybody in the house wakes up and they study the bible it all varies from person to person 
for me evening was always the best in my life so the time is not important but it is important that you do it at the approximately the same time every day you may ask why brother studies have shown that if you do the same activity approximately at the same time every day then in about 4 weeks your body and mind become tuned to it and therefore after the four week your body and mind start preparing itself for that activity even before you start it that is the reason why you should be consistent then once you set up time for all this you need to study in a systematic manner and when we study the bible in a systematic manner it can be of many types one if you are a new believer if you have never been discipled in a church if you were not born in a brethren family or a similar if you were not born in a congregational church related family then most probably bible is a black box for you you don't know what is there you know about adam you know about noah you know about daniel and rest of it is greek for you such believers should first of all become acquainted with the bible for that they should start reading from genesis to revelation genesis to revelation genesis to revelation you will say my goodness brother what are you saying how many years would it take for us or take us to finish reading the bible from genesis to revelation you would be surprised that one can read the entire bible in less than 90 hours i am not joking the entire bible can be orally dictated in less than 90 hours which means the entire bible can be read in your mind in less than 90 hours which translates to 15 minutes a day if you with focus if you read the bible a mere 15 minutes a day then you will be able to read the whole of the bible at least once every year i have many people in my church and many in my family who read the entire bible a minimum of twice every year i know a man whom my father led to the lord he was a lieutenant colonel at that time in the army it's my father who baptized him and he eventually became the governor of nagaland lieutenant colonel rolly he was a chain smoker and he used to drink but after his salvation nobody told him to stop all this he stopped drinking he stopped chain smoking and all the free time that he was get he was getting after office work all the free time he started reading the bible and within about 6 months he reported that he had read the entire bible from genesis up to revelation four or five times within six months a busy lieutenant colonel in the army so when i say for your general acquaintance read the whole bible from genesis to revelation i am not joking it is not uh, something like lifting the himalayas or even climbing the himalayas 
a mere 15 minutes a day would help you to read the whole Bible in one year. Are we doing it? Let's be serious. Bible is the word of God. The Bible is the word of God and we need to give plenty of time to it. And before we go further, let me ask you one question. How many of you have television at home? If you have a television at home, how much time do you devote to it? Do you get newspaper? How much time do you devote to the newspaper? Do you read the news on your mobile? How much time do you devote to reading the news? Brothers and sisters, let us be very honest. Many of us spend a lot of time reading these things, watching TV. And yet, word of God, which is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword, which pierces deep into our hearts and which we are expected to study and divide rightly to be approved unto God, many of us neglect it very prayerfully. Those who are neglecting their spiritual life and particularly Bible reading very prayerfully, let me remind you one thing. Man shall reap what he sows. Please remember, this is not my words. God is not moved. You want to get, I want to get every kind of favor from God, but we neglect reading God's word. God is not moved. Not at all. Man shall reap what he sows. So if you neglect reading the scripture, if you give all your time to television, if you give all your time to newspaper, if you give all your time to gossip, if you give your all your time to discussion of politics, please remember that in flesh you are sowing and in flesh you will reap. Man shall reap what he sows. So please, if you are a new believer who doesn't have a clear understanding of what the 66 books are, then please read from Genesis up to Revelation a minimum of two times every year. Not difficult if you set apart 30 minutes. So the first round of Bible study should be General acquaintance where you discover biblical history. Then, once you become acquainted with the Bible, then you need to do more specific study. And the more specific study is to become a little more deeply um, acquainted with the Bible. For that, you need to do what is known as Bible survey. Bible survey means if you pick up a book from, Bible, from the Bible, say Malachi or Jeremiah, then trying to understand who wrote the book? When he, did he write the book? What is the purpose of the book? And what is substance of the book? What is the outline of the book? Studying the 66 books of the Bible in this manner is known as Bible survey. And please remember, plenty of good books are available on Bible survey. In Malayalam language, I strongly recommend a book that Dr. Sanish Chiriyan and I wrote. Title is Bible Survey. And it covers from Genesis up to Esther because Genesis up to Esther are the historical books of the Bible. 
and all the other books after esther they were written during approximately during this period from genesis up to esther with some exceptions such as malachi in malayalam that's i i strongly recommend it's a 600 page hard bound book and it is available for purchase from us it is an expository bible survey so you will get not only the data you will also get an expository introduction to books from genesis up to revelation in english the best introductory book is uh, the title is what the bible is all about what the bible is all about it was written by a lady known as henrietta mears the book is out of print but even today if you look at look into amazon.in or there are a lot of any number of uh, second hand bookshops online if you look you will get henrietta mears what the bible is all about the best simple introduction uh, our own bible survey which dr sanish and i wrote lord willing it will also become available in english very soon uh, it is undergoing final edi- uh, final editing uh, it is being edited by non indians mostly americans if you if you have already covered this much if you are a more serious bible student then there are more serious books books by charles rairi and many people of that kind that you may want to read which are slightly more heavy but without re- without reading a simple introduction the heavy books will get you completely lost so go for the simpler introductions simpler bible surveys first once your general acquaintance is done once bible survey is done and i am assuming that all the light that you gain from these studies you are noting down in your diary once all of this is done then it is time to do more serious studies but please remember without these three steps where no bible school is needed no library is needed without these three steps we cannot study the bible we cannot enjoy the bible you may say brother give us some kind of a capsule method using which we can study the bible there is no capsule method it is the sword of the spirit and to use the sword of the spirit a little work is needed there is a saying in english cheap things no good good things no cheap if you are looking for a 5 minute devotional that will never give you get you acquainted with the bible if you are desirous of getting acquainted with the bible you need to invest more time you may say oh brother who has time fine fine if you feel that you have no time for the word of god please remember that a time will come when god will have no time for you i have seen hundreds upon hundreds of people i am old enough to have seen that hundreds upon hundreds of people who were so busy with their profession who were so busy with their hobbies of all the things they were so busy with their hobbies that they had no time for the word of god eventually when crisis hits them they run to the bible they want to open the bible and get some kind of a comfort from it that is not the way to read the bible that is not the way to obtain 
divine blessings so please remember this book is your life and therefore you must give a due amount of time to it and where there is a wish there is a way you may say i am very busy oh yeah i understand you are very busy i am also very busy everybody who is in this class is very busy but just because we are busy does it prevent us from doing our day to day activities just because we are too busy do we miss marriages do we miss engage party engagement parties do we miss funerals and many of you who are sports fans do you miss sports on tv come on let us be very honest we always find time for things to which we give priority and if you don't have time to study the word of god that's because the word of god is not your first priority and if word if the word of god is not your first priority then please remember one thing god is not mocked you cannot mock god man shall reap what he sows and i say said i have seen countless people who when they had the time and when they had energy they preferred to invest that time and energy upon their hobbies rather than upon the word of god i am not asking you to drop all your hobbies no what i am suggesting is that your hobby should not steal the time that is meant for the word of god and when you set a part time like that first read the bible for a general acquaintance then bible survey then along with that noting down your observation and also spend a little time for reflection we indians are very bad when it comes to reflection i mean indian christians that is very surprising because india is the land of reflection and meditation reflection means thinking for a few minutes the subjects that you studied today maybe picking up your diary and going to a past page reading what is written there and thinking about that that is reflection so brothers and sisters please remember time for general acquaintance time for bible survey time for noting down everything time for reflection this is how we should start in the beginning these four steps are very very essential once we do this we can go to two types of studies one two or three there are actually countless methods but i strongly suggest book study oh you may say brother johnson book study it's impossible most of you who are listening to me you have been to school senior years and colleges and you passed successfully book study is not more difficult than that and there are many small books in the bible say galatians studying galatians is not all that difficult philippians colossians so the next that i suggest is book study you may say brother i have no commentaries no commentaries needed to study the word of god for your personal benefit you don't need a library what you need is the word of god preferably in more than one translation so that if a passage seems difficult to you or obscure to you so that you can consult in another translation and so that it becomes clear 
example philippines 4:13 i can do all things through christ who gives me strength i once heard a preacher who read that verse and said brothers and sisters i can do anything in this world based because this verse says i can do all things through christ who gives me strength no that is not what the passage is saying i can if you consult other translations they make it clear i can do all those things which god asks me to do through the strength that is in christ that is what this verse is saying so this is the reason why we should consult multiple translations but using multiple translations there are many small books in the bible which can be studied i will come to that later there are also passage studies say you pick up a small passage from matthew or you pick up a small passage or a brief one paragraph from one of the epistles and you can study them now exactly what method you use depends upon you the only thing to take care is brothers and sisters please note down your observations in a diary so suppose you read a passage say story of the prodigal son then you should ask a few questions to yourself about that passage the first i will pick them up in greater detail but let me give the list first first are there any universal truths in this passage universal truth means which applies to every generation the second question you need to ask is are there any experiential truths in this passage related to experience three are there any exhortations in the passage four are there any warnings in the passage not every passage has warnings so we ask this question are there any warnings in the in this passage then another question are there any warnings related to choice and consequences there are many more questions that we can ask and as you become serious with your bible studies you will discover those questions automatically and you will start asking but let us go back to the first question are there any universal truths in this passage within that there are few questions that you can ask are there any eternal truths example god so loved the world loved the world is there any eternal truth yes yes god always loved the world so what is it conveying this verse is conveying that god's love is beyond comparison what do we read in the prodigal son story same thing god's love is beyond comparison and since god's love is beyond comparison no sinner should continue in the sin the moment he or she recognizes that i have sinned they should come back to god they should come back to the father and the father will accept them unconditionally that's a universal truth we glean from story of the prodigal son are there any universal truths 
another question we have to ask is there any positional truth in that passage positional means which talks about our position yes the prodigal son story shows that once you are a son you are always a son prodigal or not you are always a son and it is up to you to claim that sonship the elder brother was a son but he put all the blame on the father without claiming privileges of his sonship the younger one he was a run away he wanted a little more freedom he chose to run away but the moment he realized that that was a very foolish choice he opts to come back on his return there is no ceremony to make him a son once a son always a son he realized it he claimed his position of course he claimed it through apology he, he claimed it through terrible repentance but the position was given so uh, are there any positional truths check the passage prodigal son the positional truth is that once a son always a son are there any universal truths in this passage by universal i mean which applies to everyone universally yes when we read the prodigals and story it makes clear that all of us are prodigals in one way or another you may be a lesser prodigal i may be a greater prodigal but all of us are prodigals in some way or other and all of us need restoration and all what we need to do for restoration is go back to the father and father will accept you father will forgive you and accept you unconditionally so now my question uh, here is the first question are there any universal truths in the prodigal son passage and within that single question i ask three questions are there any eternal truths two are there any positional truths three are there any universal truths another question we should ask is what is the practical implication what is the practical implication for me see i'm reading the word of god and studying it basically for my growth my maturity what is the implication many implications are there for example this god the father accepts us god the father loves us unconditionally are we ready to love our brothers and sisters unconditionally oh immediately you will say brother johnson you really don't know how wicked people are i do know i am 68 i have come across a lot of wickedness i have suffered much deprivation because of depend uh, because of the wickedness of people i know but the word of god is very clear that though the world is wicked you and i we have to love unconditionally because our father loved us unconditionally this passage also tells that when you love unconditionally you will also forgive unconditionally there are lot of people who are ready to forgive but only conditionally that is not christian forgiveness they are willing to love condition that is not christian love christian love christian forgiveness christian compassion the scripture makes it very clear that these things are to be modeled after the way god has loved us and the love of god 
and the rebellion of mankind is shown very clearly in the story of the prodigal son let me also add one thing very practical observation if you and i are self righteous then we will miss blessings miss god's blessings the elder son he did not enter the house oh he said this younger son who wasted his money with prostitutes how did he know how did the elder brother know that his younger brother wasted money in this manner and if he knew then as the elder son who stands in place of father was it not his responsibility to go and persuade his brother to come back so the elder brother reminds us that any one of us who despises our fellow brothers is losing his fellowship with father the younger one came into fellowship the elder one when he came home he found the younger one there he despised the younger one he lost his fellowship do you remember read the, read the parable once again he was so annoyed the parable says he was so annoyed that because he did not want to enter the house it's a universal lesson the moment we despise our brothers the moment we become self righteous the moment we accuse the father that moment though everything looks all right yet at that moment we lose our fellowship with the father perhaps there are many here today who are quick at condemning others who are self righteous who despise others brothers and sisters please remember by doing these things you are breaking your fellowship with the father all of this we can glean from by using one question are there any universal truths in this passage there are many more truths many more questions just imagine if we start asking the right questions when we study the bible how much we can glean from the word of god no bible school is needed no commentaries are needed no libraries are needed you may ask then why is the library behind you because though they are not needed if you can afford or if you can have they are a blessing but they are not a must what is a must is set up our time discipline yourself read and study the word of god approximately at the same time every day note it down may god bless all of you to understand this very important divine truth